We met up with Callum at a studio in Stirling and chatted with him about his work since winning Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year. When I finished uh, doing the big commission and all that for Portrait Artist of the Year, I was finding it really difficult as to what to do next and I went down a really um, kind of depictive route of the, the figure. Uh, it was just portraiture and, and that was really representational and I was doing it and I was enjoying it enough but it wasn't giving me that kind of excitement. I wasn't finding that it was exactly where I wanted to go and finding what I needed to be doing next was really difficult. And so you'll notice in the show, in the body of work that I've made, there's almost like a a change, there's a switch between what I was doing and moved into something which was more abstract. It was more enjoyable for me, it was more free and it was uh, exciting and new. And so I needed time to develop that, but the paintings that I'd done straight after the show, um, they were necessary to get me to that point. I started by just playing around with light a little bit, but it wasn't extreme enough, it wasn't giving me the, the excitement. Like I said, it, it was just a, a change of colour. And so that developed into um, adding an abstraction, which is coming from my, I've always been interested in abstraction from uh, following works of like Gerard Richter and uh, reading the daily practice of painting and things like that. You know, you find out about how they uh, produce the, uh, how he produces these massive squeegee paintings and things like that. It was always a fascination. Um, and so I kind of combined the both of these things, that kind of portraiture side of what I've been doing and I hope that uh, viewers of the work can find something that they enjoy, whether or not they like abstract painting or whether they just prefer portraits, because it, it is embodying both of that um, kind of side of my work. It's a, a synthesis of the both of them. With this body of work, um, you've been working with the dancers. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a bit about that. Well, that's been really interesting. I'm not exactly someone who is a dancer themselves. I'm, in fact, the opposite. Um, and so it, I thought a lot about how I could go about these works. Once I came off of the show, uh, Portrait Artist of the Year, I, I kind of wanted to keep working with the figure, but I didn't want to just paint straight on portraits. And so I thought how I could introduce, you know, a more broad figure into the work while maintaining that kind of interesting abstract part that I enjoy. Um, and the best way I could think to kind of combine the both was through dance, really. It's been a completely new experience for me and uh, one that I kind of stumbled across randomly, talking to Kelsey, my partner, just talking about the work and saying, well, what's the closest thing to the combination of abstract movements and, th and it, it is dancers really, isn't it? So put the two together and uh, <laughs> it worked surprisingly. I had already done some abstract paintings as well, but just the abstract parts, just kind of had fun with it. And so we would set up a photo shoot and we would, um, I, would, I would get the dancers to respond to the abstract sections of the painting or I would get them to respond to um, works by old masters like Rubens, um, Degas, you know, Degas ballerinas. I would, we would look at them and the composition in them and we would try to mimic the poses in them and the dancers were incredible. They would um, kind of jitter in and out of these poses that were in the paintings, but obviously it's not gonna be the exact same. And it would create this variation between the two. And I found that amazing and just the perfect fit for what I was doing. The challenging part was obviously taking something which was already created like the abstract background and then weaving the figures into it. That was the difficult part, but that was obviously my problem to figure out. Um, but the dancers really um, opened up the series of the painting. You know, I didn't give them many directions. Maybe once or twice I would try and create some variation, getting a new pose or a new direction, a new angle. Um, but they brought all of the kind of spontaneity of the movement and the, the randomness behind it. That was all them. And so it was a collaboration when you think about it like that. We done a photo shoot in here only a couple of weeks, or it was last week or a week ago, uh, two weeks ago. Um, and one of the, ja uh, the dancers, Jennifer, um, I, I'd done that very kind of uh, little task with her to respond to this painting. And so uh, she was talking about uh, swimming through oil. Um, and so it creates some really amazing effects, you know. Um, and it, it 
does help when I come to the point where I want to put the figures into the paintings because they've responded to it. It's not just me asking them to do something or them a random dance. They're, you know, reflecting on what they're seeing and it fits in better. How much have you used the digital side of things for, for this body of work? A lot. I always use the digital kind of combination of uh, technology to help me improve the work. I've always done that um, and I feel at this stage it's almost probably expected from me. You know, people looking at my work, they maybe just gather that I use some kind of technology. I mean, there's been a screen sitting here the whole time. Um, and so I take photographs, I work from the photographs, I need a screen to look at the photographs. Um, and I, I use that to get a better um, composition. It, you know, it allows me to move things around, make sure I'm happy with it before I start. Uh, and especially when you start with the abstract part, that's the only part which is just um, free in a way, you know, um, because it is what it is. But when I want to put faces in it or figures, I need to play around with how they're going to sit. And so that can be quite difficult. And it, it takes me a long time as well. I spend maybe a week with like three paintings digitally, um, going through many variations, annoying tons of friends and what do they prefer maybe. It's all to help me kind of collate where where things should go. Tell us about the media you're using at the moment and that you've used for this show. So the works are like a blend of oil on canvas um, and oil on wooden board. That's kind of typical of how I've worked in the past. Um, but it was, a, it was a long process of finding um, the, the method in which would help me create these kind of abstract areas in the paintings. Uh, and that I went through many different uh, priming surfaces, uh, priming paints and, and things like that on different surfaces uh, and trying to achieve this kind of negative brush stroke look. Um, that was difficult, but I've kind of landed on that now with using like an oil based primer. Things take a little longer to dry and, um, you know, it wouldn't be my preferred choice if I was doing like a, just a normal portrait, but with this method, it really helps you push the paint around and things like that. And that took me forever to work out. It sounds so small, but there was a lot went into that. And then painting in uh, grayscale as well, there's some uh, kind of grisaille style paintings and that was a nightmare as well, trying to match the tone of the grey to the, the grey that was in the background. And yeah, it's been, it's been a whole thing, but lots of little experiments with paint and uh, different surfaces have helped me get to the point where it is now. And I've said before, but it will continue to improve and develop and change. And so the time is, uh, is good for the show, you know, it's getting better as I go on. Are you buying it in already primed? Yeah, and that's the first time I've done that. I didn't know that you could even do that. I can't remember where I got it from, um, but it was a bit like, whoa, I can get this pre prime <laughs> and then it's gonna save me all that time doing that, but that was really good. Um, and I think you can even get ones with oil primer already on it, so maybe I'll try that soon, and maybe I won't have to do that at all, and that'd be good. But it's quite a thin layer on the canvas um, of primer, so, you know, it's, uh, it's not the best, but. I'm still adding to it because, you know, maybe I only have to add one less layer now. So that's that's like half a day, you know, because when you're working at these big scale with paintings, you know, it takes forever to prime them and getting a nice smooth surface. It's, um, yeah, it's an art in itself. I mean, especially for this method in which there, I've said the negative brush stroke, it's like nearly pure white. Um, and when you're pulling paint away, if there was a texture, the grain will retain some of the paint and so you won't get that kind of stark white look. And the wall helps get that as well. It means that when it's stretched, you know, there's a bounce, there's a, there's a gap, whereas the wall prevents that. I wish I had somebody telling me all of this um, two months ago and I had to figure it all out. I'm, I'm hearing this saying, oh, if anyone wants to do this, just watch this, you know, and that'll, they'll, they'll have everything they need. <laughs> How many works do you have going? Um, I quite like to have a couple of the small ones on the go, the ones that are up here. I, I've had them on the go while working on large paintings, like this one behind me as well, um, at the same time. But, you know, you're talking like three max at a time, really. I don't like to commit to too many different things. I feel like you get lost, especially when you're in a process of development. Every painting 
you're noticing something, something that you maybe then need to apply to the next painting. Um, and so if I've got three on the go and I finish them all, well then I'm not really learning from the one that could have been improved. Um, and so I've been taking them one at a time, at least finishing them one at a time. But you know, the abstract sections, I can do like two or three of them in a day. Um, and I feel like sometimes that is necessary as well. If I leave it two days or if I leave it a week to come back to do another abstract painting, you, um, you might find that the abstract sections are too varied. Uh, maybe that's what you want. But if you want something that links together, then it's probably better to do it right away while well, you've still got whatever feelings going on and the emotion and the, the vigor in the work is the same and you can just move it over to another one. And so, yeah, I've, I've done it like that. Do you know what you're going to paint when your face is like a canvas? Not really. No, I, I think other than being inspired by maybe other artworks, like I was saying, like Rubens and, you know, I've always liked those and the compositions are amazing. Maybe you take that lightly into consideration. If you've got a, you just kind of pick a size, pick a shape, um, and maybe you respond to it when you're doing, you know, that's another way to think of it. If I'm looking at the these kind of influences, other artists, um, and responding to their painting in my abstract work, you know, it, I, that's my response and in the dancers is something else. So it's like a combination of the two. Hence, this whole show being called Synthesis, which is a big combination of different elements. I thought that was the best way to sum it up without a direct um, meaning behind everything. It was a, a combination of different things, isn't it? So I felt that was very fitting. <laughs>